All right, let's get going on the cowling. First step is to make a wooden plywood or press wood. Plywood's probably better. We have press wood here. 13 inch disc, uh, cut the 13 millimeter holes for the um, uh, bungs that come out of the extension. Make sure you do put the extension that's supplied on the engine, otherwise your cowling will be too short. Um, then get some longer bolts and some spacers. You only need like three of them and mount this to your engine. Once you have that framework done, you have something that you can mount the cowling to. Granted, we're not allowing for uh, the space here now, but this would be the spinner. Uh, we eventually have to move the cowling back a little bit to get a gap, because there has to be a gap between the spinner and the cowling. But we're not gonna worry about that quite yet, because we're not that close to having it fitted exactly to where we want. So. For now, we're just gonna clamp it directly to the wood. And later on, when we get closer to having it perfected as far as fit and finish, we're gonna move it back a little bit. Now, grab the cowling, and the first thing you do, if you look down inside here, is you measure the center and cut out for the nose wheel. It doesn't have to be, I mean, it's totally up to you how close you want things to be. It, there's no requirement for it to be very close as far as the air uh, liquid cooled engine. Plenty of air is still going to enter the radiator and so forth. So we used a hole saw and a cutoff disc and we cut that out. Then we laid, then we brought the cowling up to the airplane. We brought it back and up because obviously this flange has to be behind the wood. So that's how we did it. And now we're just clamping it to the wood that we, the wooden disc. We also trim back here for the shroud, the Viking shroud. And you can see the trim that we did there. Eventually when everything is finished we might end up uh, doing a little bit of fairing in the corner underneath here and we'll show that to blend into this. Also not necessary but just something if you want everything to continue in a perfect flow from the cowling to the radiator shroud. A little bit of filler right there wouldn't hurt. All right, we're gonna move on to um, trimming it a little bit more and getting it more into position. Basically what we're after is to get the cowling up and against the airplane everywhere so that we can put hinges in here. And while we're doing that, we wanna make sure that the cowling is perpendicular to the spinner disc. We also want to make sure that we don't have uh, something that'll bite you later, like the cowling is hanging and it's bending your wooden disc or something like that, or it's touching somewhere and you, you're not aware of it. And then when you finally take it off of here, it, it springs or something like that. So you want to make sure that everything is kind of free floating, supported. Um, we have a piece of wood down here right now that's supporting the bottom. And that's a good idea. But like I was just saying, I, I want to at the same time be sure that I'm not bending the cowling. Because if I have stress in the cowling when I'm mounting it and I'm forcing it, it's going to make it very difficult in, in the end to be able to put our piano hinges in and out and to fit the cowling easily. Very good. All right, so it's starting to, uh, to line up better and better. We've got the cowling up where we want it now. It's about an inch from the top here. And it's flat in the front. Now we're going to hold this up against the airplane on both sides and we're going to draw a line right up along here. Now because we don't have a gap in the front, if we cut that line, that's going to be okay because we're going to move the cowling a quarter inch that way which gives us the overlap that we need uh, even if we cut right on the line right now. So that's next.
We'll make up the pins for the hinges and uh, these are the pins that came with it. <coughs> we might, when we're all done, put a little point on one end, not too sharp, and a 90 on the other end. At the end we might go with undersized pins but during assembly we're going to use the full size and then we'll see what happens. All right, so we got the hinges put together but we put them together kind of backwards. We want, we flip one of the, them around so that this, then one, the one that's further forward on the airplane is also further out. That way the cowling, when it lays against that, you will have a little bit of gap between this and the fuselage so the fiberglass doesn't rub onto the uh, airplane. And you get that because the hinge has an offset. So all you have to do is flip one of the two and then we're going to bend it to fit the airplane. After we bend it, you're going to feel that it's harder to move the pin. If it's not too bad, we're going to leave it alone. Uh, we might also just file, take this apart, and that's something that does work. You take one of these and you just take away a little bit on each, each of these with a file so that they can go, go together easier like this. Because right now it has to go very precisely for it to fit. Once we get a little bit of that filed away, then this will go together much easier. Since we're not using it as a door hinge, uh, it might as well go together easy this way rather than having to fight it. I usually take my bandsaw and just go in and take a sixteenth of an inch off each one of them. And then I put it together and then I can use it on the airplane. Good. Alright, so what we got so far is we showed the hinge with the offset going an S turn this way. So this is now further out than this. So when we put the cowling on, there'll be a gap behind here. <clears throat> we also sawed off an, a sixteenth of an inch on each loop. So there's a little bit of play in the hinge, which makes it easier to move the pin. We've also shaped the hinge to fit the airplane. And we have put one rivet in here where the, the curvature of the loop here is not riding up on this. So we're at flat surface against flat surface when we riveted that. And now we're gonna move this out and we're gonna do the same here. We're gonna move this in just, just enough that we're not riding up on the radius. It's gonna be like right there. And then we're gonna clamp that and even the hinge out so it's laying flat against the airplane everywhere. And we'll put a couple of more Clicos or rivets in and then we're gonna start working on the skin. We'll cut this out, and that one there, we'll leave that alone because it's not a lot of curb up there. Okay, so we're going to remove this, and this, and this. This will be the bottom one, one, two, three, four. So, we have the... The hinges cut into little pieces and mar labeled. So now the cowling will go up against it and these will go up against that. Now we're also going to shorten the cowling so it's no longer than it needs to be because as it, as it meets the airplane back here it's not the same angle so that's why we want to keep the cowling short so that these will lay nice and flat up against it. We're going to do that next. We also pre-drilled some holes to make it easier now to go in with the angle drill and just uh, pop through and put some clay goes in. So if you got a real bright light and you can't get your angle drill inside and you want to find a hole, just put it behind where you're drilling. Right enough. You'll be able to see the the hole in the uh, in the hinge. And then there's one down here. All right, so now when we have a clear coat in there, we're going to mark anywhere we can uh, the end of the cowling. So we're going to add a quarter inch to that when we take it off, and that'll be the the final trim of the of the cowling. Ready? All right. All right. So 
uh, prior to doing all this hinge work, I don't know if we showed you guys, but now you have to decide how much um, clearance you want between the cowling and the spinner. We used three paint, paint, three paint sticks here. You can use two. Uh, question is how, you know, the, the tighter it is. Some people think it looks better when it's tight uh, against with an even gap. I, I don't really think so. I think functionally putting like about three paint sticks would be good as far as uh, compromise between looks and being able to get the cowling on and off. And we did this shift of the cowling back before we started this work back here, which was we showed it on the other side and it's the same on this side. We've now divided up the hinges and placed them in there and we've now marked this edge all the way down so that we can now remove the cowling and trim the cowling so it only overhangs about an eighth of an inch onto the airplane. I'm going to make these lines and then when I cut it I'm just going to stay on the outside of these lines and that would just give me a little bit of overlap onto the airplane but also not a lot. What you want some, you know, so you can't really see the you can't really see the uh, the overlap of the hinge. But we don't want much. So it's right there. So that's gonna go straight up like that. And then down here we just continue the same thing all the way to the bottom. Alright, so we're gonna leave that line. We'll mark the other side and we'll leave the line. All right, so now we've gotten to the point where we have the cowling um, up against the airplane here. We kept shortening this. We can just barely see the hinge here. The cowling is still a little bit long right here. We, as, as this curve comes in, we don't want the curve to hit back here because we'll never be able to push the cowling in. That's just because the cowling and the airplane kind of meet at different angles. Not so much up here, but it does down here, from about here to here. So once we get that, uh, what we ended up doing was um, cutting the hinges into the three or four sections as we showed already. And then we have been clicoing, repositioning, uh, shortening here until, until the, all the little leaves of the hinge was laying flush. And we're using the full size pin here. And then when we're all done, we might consider putting an undersized pin in. But so far it's been going really good. Uh, we're making sure nothing is binding. Um, if we have to unclico one of the hinge leaves and and ream the hole and put it back in, then that's what we'll do. We're not riveting anything until it goes in perfectly and smoothly. All right, so we we put the top on and we found the center back here by seeing how far it draped down. We're down at like the second rivet here, but the same on the other side. We put a piece of tape in the middle to hold it down. <clears throat> and we've been moving it around a little bit up front here to center it. And we've been looking in through our opening here to see if, um, if we're touching the engine. We can also, you know, keep this plate loose now so you can take it on and off. Then you can look up inside and make sure you're not hitting the engine. We're not gonna lower this cowling 
uh, as much as we did in the past because we want a little bit more room up in here. There's no reason to have everything very tight. We do have uh, uh, some things that are not 100% perfect on this corner, so we'll fix that in the mold. But um, we're going to put this on 100% and just put a tiny little bit of Bondo right there and that'll be okay. Uh, the cowling is looking better and better. Um, we keep tweaking it to fit better on the airplane and we really like the new look. We'll take a look uh, when it's all done and see what it, what it turns out to. Now we're going to finish this side with the, with the really tiny uh, Clicos here. We've just, just very carefully push the cowlings together and drill one, drill one, without reshaping the cowling. And then uh, the purpose of that is we, we don't really care if we put little holes in the cowling because it's fiberglass. So prior to paint, we can, we can fill those up very easily. So whatever holes you want to make, as long as they're small, it's not hurting anything. So we were able to now get a nice line here. And so we can eventually just trim it or mark it and trim it right below there. Now we're going to move over to the other side and see how that turns out. Now we have it basically fitted. Now the overlap here is not perfectly straight. And so before we draw a line, we'll take the cowling back off. I'm going to sand this part with a board, sand it straight. Then we're going to put it back on and mark the bottom. The uh, goal, of course, is to get the high spots out of it. So we're going to sand on the high spots until we got it straight. Once we get up here and we're past where the piano hinge is going to go, it's not so important that it continues. You can, you can curve it up or whatever you need to, to make it just a smooth transition because you're going to be drawing that onto the other cowling. But in the area where from here to there where you're going to have a piano hinge, you just want to knock down the high style cowling with the cheeks. I don't like to bring the hinges way back here. There's not a need for that once, once it's held to about this point. And then of course it's being held here and then we're going to have it wrapped here. We're going to have a short piece of hinge up there. So we leave no hinge here that makes it easier to get the pin in and out. Um, and also as the cheeks are coming together, the hinge, there's not much room left here as far as width because it's curves. So we start on the flat area and we work our way almost to the front like that. Um, we're going to do that on this side and the other side. We're using number five rivets and uh, pretty much every other hinge loop is where we place a rivet. A uh, lot of ways you can, you know, set the height of the hinge. I like to just go right down the middle, uh, or I, I take basically the, the bottom of the loop here and I align that with the edge. Uh, sometimes, you know, then you might be able to see the hinge if the cowling is not perfect. Some people will, and I have done in the past too, like raise it or lower it a little bit so you get the flat spot behind it. The, again, the issue with doing that is this is a continuous curve here. So you want the hinge as close to the center as you want. So I think this is good. This is how we're doing it. And um, we'll put a couple more rivets in and move to the other side. Trapping tape and sometimes it's handy to have pull, pull this together uh, when we drill with the bigger rivets. Just, uh, just to get a nice line. So that's all we're doing here. All right, looking good. All right, so now we're just drilling up the last few and put the bigger rivets in.
right, so we got the, the cowling all complete. Once it's, uh, you know, once you've been trial fitting the bottom and it goes on and off easy and you're happy with the way it is and you start with the top and we got some details we can talk about there. Obviously, we showed you how to put the hinge in and all that. But as far as, once you get to this point where it seems like you're done, let's point out like the little things that you can still tweak on. Um, of course, you want the cowlings to separate and come apart easily. One way to do that is to go with undersized pins, which we have available. Um, here we made a little access for the pin, and you can see it, you know, it goes in and out pretty good. And that's what, what you want, you know, something that has a little bit of friction. You don't have to worry about the pin ever coming out. I get that question a lot. It will not come out. Once the, the cowling pressurizes in flight, the hinge will never come out. There will be tons and tons of load on that hinge, so it's not going to vibrate out or anything like that. If you have areas like in the front here uh, where it might not, you know, after you put your hinge and everything in, it's not perfect, you know, it, there's nothing, this is an airplane, is no different than a car. Get some coarse sandpaper and rough it up real good. Take a little Bondo and smear it in there and before the Bondo hardens, take a rough paper and just knock off the extra Bondo and, and that, that's what you do. <clears throat> that's, that's just how you would do it just like if you're working on, on a car. Um, if you wanted your cowling to, you know, blend right into the in, intake for the radiator, it already does that. We've got it trimmed, everything's fine, it blends just fine. But, you know, some customers, and, and maybe if it was my own airplane, I'd like to see it, you know, nice line going right into this sheet metal here. So I would do the same. I would, I would put a little Bondo right in here. Uh, to blend this into this, but it's not necessary. I'm just giving you suggestions if you have some uh, You know looking for a show plane or want to be the number one at Oshkosh or something like that, which is that's a nice thing um, Another hint for that for instance would be right here uh, We're now going to take a little piece of metal our hinge stops here and we're noticing that this doesn't quite follow this here so we're going to take a piece of metal, doesn't have to be big, maybe uh, an inch and a half wide and an inch and a half tall. And we're going to rivet it here and here, and then it's going to go behind here. So when, when you put it together, that piece of metal will be behind this piece of fiberglass, and it'll pull that right out. So then that'll be perfectly even. And that's a trick you can do in different places. You don't have to have a hinge all the way. You know that this part of the cowling is further out than this part of the, part of the cowling. So if you rivet a tab here that goes behind the other one, it will pull that out and it'll be perfect. Another thing that we did was, um, and I spoke of it earlier, is once we have this done all the way around here and it's trimmed, being very careful that we don't shorten this too much because it will just fall off the top here. Uh, we now have no, can notice that this sticks out right in this corner a little bit. So we drew a line here now and we're going to carefully sand that back. And the more we sand it back, the closer it gets to the skin because it's actually coming at an angle like this. Uh, we want to shorten it to the point where it is almost touching the skin or it's down on the skin and not sticking out looking like this. And then, of course, at the end, you're going to want to put an anti-chafe tape. You can use vinyl tape, electrical tape or something, right where the cowling meets the airplane. Of course, the vinyl tape won't last more than maybe between your 100-hour inspections, but that's plenty. Then you can just put a new piece of vinyl tape on. Another thing we did is we put a piece of hinge on top here. And that's important because... Uh, you don't want, like, you don't need fasteners all the way around here. There's no need for that. What you want is that when you grab the cowling in the front and you lift it up and down, you don't want it to have any movement. You want your cowling to be locked into place. So if I grab it here now, and I have a hinge already here, and I have a hinge over there, and I, and I have hinges here, I'm still going to be able to have some movement up and down. And you don't want that because once you get your spinner and everything fitted here, you want that to all stay. And you only have so much clearance between the engine and the cowling. And we're going to look in here afterwards and show you that. But right now, with that, just that little piece of hinge up there, it really, really stiffens things up. Now, how did we do that? 
we took a little piece of hinge and we flipped it upside down so the bulb is facing down into the engine compartment. And uh, we're having a little fight with the dog over here. Um, maybe come over here and show the, the crowd what's really going on on the set. <laughs> Our little dog is very jealous and we're spending a lot of time on the airplane. Uh, so um, Justin's gonna bring his camera and we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna show you how we did the top hinge. Basically you have a little pin like they all are that just pulls right in. We made a slot here where we can insert the pin very easily. The nice thing about this system is we can now install and remove the top cowling in a matter of seconds. So we don't really need an oil cooler door. You can put one on, I mean, not an oil cooler, but an oil access door or something like that. With these modern engines, it really rarely does it need any kind of inspection on the engine if there's no oil on the belly or anything like that. That being said, it's always nice to look at your engine prior to flight or every other flight or something like that. And you can do that here. You, you pull this hinge pin, you pull that pin, and you pull this one out, and before you know it, and I'm not gonna say that, you know, they don't get looser over time, because they will. Uh, and you can use a pair of pliers if you want. But then you can lift the whole top off, and you can inspect the engine really carefully. Um, what you want up here, as far as installing, is you want the bulb of the hinge to overhang the front of the sheet metal down. Otherwise, you can't get a nice flat surface like we have here. So, yeah, you have to kind of finagle it so that you can just get these rivets in, and then the bulb of the hinge is overhanging the edge of the aluminum down, so you get a flat surface underneath, and then you have to be able to put these in. So, we did that. Uh, what we are going to look at next is we're going to look inside here. I'm not sure if we're going to have enough light, but we're going to give it a shot. And you can see what we were playing with when it comes to like getting enough room for the engine to clear on top. Right. All right, so what we did is um, we made sure that we had a fairly consistent ring here. When we installed the cowling, we focused on a couple of things. Being centered on this, but also we looked at how much of the bottom cowling we wanted to leave because there's always some extra and how much of the top we wanted to leave for trimming and we ended up trimming the bottom cowling and leaving the top alone because we wanted as much top as we could and we did that because this hump here clears the fuel pump of the engine and as you can see we have plenty of room on top of the fuel pump uh, and that's just because of the way we situated the cowling. And if you look up on the other side, you can see we have plenty of room between the intake manifold and the engine. Plenty meaning like three quarters of an inch to an inch up here. And that's about what we were able to achieve by carefully moving this around. We also installed a screen here. And we did that because clearly having a hump on the cowling can be an eyesore. So what we wanted to do, since we do have a, a direct injected engine, and that's a big benefit to aviation, but at the same time, we wanted to get a nice streamlined cowling, and we wanted to cover the fuel pump, and what we've done is to make that look like an air intake. You don't necessarily need to put cooling air on the high pressure pump, but why not make it look like an air inlet rather than just a blister on the cowling? So that's what we have done. You can glue this type of netting in, which we have with the, the right stuff sealer. You can also use it here, which looks really, really cool. Uh, but I would fly the airplane first to make sure get a baseline for what you have for engine cooling. Uh, so yeah, that's the finale as far as uh, the start to finish on the cowling for the Zenit aircraft using the Viking 130 engine.